the National Geographic Society defines places as locations having distinctive features that give them meaning and character that differ from other locations. Therefore, places are human creations, and people's lives are grounded in particular places. We come from a place, we live in a place, and we preserve and exhibit fierce pride over places. I am place proud. I love our little city. I'll take the long way home and drive along Main Street just to take in its beauty, from the spire that rises at the head of the square, to the trees that line its center, to this very theater with its glittering marquee. I'll peer into storefronts, peek into Railroad Square, and admire diners seated outside of the works, Lucas, the stage, or one of the many other outdoor seating venues. I love watching the college students wander Main Street those first few weeks of the fall semester before the weight of assignments gets them down or the weather gets too cold. And maybe you're like I am and you struggle with how to cross from Court Street to Roxbury Street, anxious that you won't catch that green arrow in time. I told my friend Chuck a few years ago that I wanted to find my bar stool, my place at the corner of the bar where I could take where I could slide in after a tough day at work and watch the hum of the room and catch the, hum, the buzz of conversations. When I walk along Main Street to get my coffee at Prime Roast or my breakfast at Timoleon's, I'll see who's hanging out at Railroad Square, chat with the regulars on the park benches that line Main Street, and see just what's going on. I'll chat with Chuck a little bit later to see if he has the same thoughts about how people are doing and what the word on Main Street is. I've ran just about every street in this city training for the Damar Half Marathon, and each neighborhood has these qualities in it that makes me proud to call Keene home. I love traveling and going on adventures. My favorite places to visit are cities or landscapes that resemble our mountain region and our river valley. I feel a sense of reverse claustrophobia when I'm away from the mountains, like there isn't something holding me in. When I return home west on 101 and cross that rise just before Peterborough, I'll sing, ah, oh, when I see Monadnock rising in the horizon. Then I know I'm home. My fierce pride in my city stems from its beauty, but is it, it isn't what has kept me here for over 30 years. It's part of why I married a local boy and I stayed here to raise our son. Many of us have experienced a time when it seemed as all, if, if, if all was lost. And it was a time like this when my family and our community came together for my son and me. I see generosity here every day. I see it in the form of a colleague who secretly gives money to send a local child to camp. I see it in the Lions Club that has vision screenings for our students and Cheshire Smiles who ensures that our students' dental health needs are met. It's in the Red Cap Run that supports a local family in crisis every year. It's also in our Rotary Club, club that makes sure our students in second grade have sneakers. We have many agencies in Keene, but we can't always rely on them to fulfill every need. This community is rich in people and organizations, and there are many examples of neighbor helping neighbor. This spirit of generosity is why I was confused a few years ago by the debate surrounding the panhandlers and homeless. Up until five years ago, I didn't even notice an increase in the homeless and the panhandlers. If I had spare change, I had no trouble sharing it. I'd often get responses like, stop supporting their bad habits. In a February 2015 Keen Sentinel article, a local business person said that handing over a dollar can absolve people of the systemic problems, of thinking about the systemic problems that cause poverty. I thought a lot about this statement, 
but I still gave that dollar. Because until we admitted that there might be a problem, we couldn't begin to touch the surface of the ocean full of problems that contribute to poverty. As the debate heated up on talk radio and more Sentinel articles followed, I still felt even more strongly about my right to give that money. Suddenly, Main Street didn't seem as beautiful and inviting. And Keene, the birthplace of Jonathan Daniels and all are welcome here, didn't seem so welcoming to its most vulnerable citizens. I went to my first training at 100 Nights and volunteered each Sunday without any agenda. I wanted to acknowledge that the problem existed in our perfect, quaint little community and go about figuring out my role in helping to find a solution. But that phrase, the systemic problems that contribute to poverty, stopped me in my tracks when I encountered the guests at 100 Nights. I knew my few, years of few hours of volunteering couldn't fix the problem, but I had to start somewhere. So I started where the people of 100 Nights started, by providing a safe place for people who had no place to go on a cold night. I simply listened to the guests and found out that they aren't too lazy to find a job. They shared their stories of losing everything and finding shelter at 100 Nights. Not many people say that Keene is a great place to be homeless on a cold winter's night. Many people who are homeless here in Keene are from this region. In fact, one particular guest to whom Chuck and I chat with regularly shares my passion for reading. She's a longtime educator who spent many years teaching children how to read. We share a love of books. Her favorite author is Joyce Maynard. She once asked us the question, what women authors did we study in high school and college? She can usually be found reading or doing crossword puzzles. And she always asks me how my school year is going. Many of the homeless share their dreams of finding a job or a place to live, maybe even reconnecting with family. When they find out that I'm an educator, they share their struggles with the classroom and wished they had done better. It makes me think back to my own students who sometimes struggled with the structure of a classroom and a system that didn't take into account that their home lives might be difficult. I struggled when my neighbors expressed their disdain toward the panhandlers and the homeless because they couldn't understand that there are circumstances that lead to homelessness. I grew impatient when they said that 100 nights was just a means for people to stop working and continue to rely on public funding and housing. In addition to struggling with mental illness, With mental illness and addiction, there are those who, for a multitude of reasons, find themselves unable to find a place to call home. 100 Nights serves as more than an emergency shelter. What I learned led me on the path to advocacy. I reacted to what was being said about the homeless, and I responded through my volunteer work. When people find that I volunteer at 100 Nights, they usually respond with a measure of awe and respect. It's not why I do this. Many didn't even know that I volunteered at 100 Nights. And it wasn't until the film Hidden in Plain Sight came out that they learned of my secret. I tell people that they too have a cause within them, something that can shift thinking and help us solve the problems in our community. There are many agencies that could use your help. When I reflect on, what, on my journey toward advocacy, I don't dwell on how it came about. I don't feel this tug to find a deeper purpose in my life or add something to my resume. I reflected on my community, community this human creation that has grounded me to this place and its people. Despite our stumbling ways to help our most vulnerable amid the dull roar of get a job, stop being so lazy, 
I still feel a fierce pride in our city and its region. At some deep level, there are certain measures of gratification that come from being an accidental advocate. There are the guests who have found better paying jobs and stable housing, and the friends of 100 Nights who come out in force to support us at city council meetings and zoning and planning board meetings. There are the family and friends who come to our fundraising and support our efforts to find a larger location close to services in Keene. I feel a connection to our community, the part that calls us to action, the part that ensures that all of our citizens are safe, even the most vulnerable who are trying to find their way back. How many of you would be surprised to know that our city's master plan includes a provision to provide for the homeless? It's part of who we are. There are many opportunities in our community to become involved, and hopefully you will find a cause that moves you toward advocacy. We think I'm just one person. How can I make a difference? It's okay to ask what's in it for me in your search for your personal answer. You will find that answer when you take time to react to something that you care about, something that concerns you, and then respond in a positive way. This is your city. You walk, you drive, possibly you even run its streets every day. I believe it is our responsibility to make Keene a better place to live. So many of our neighbors, including many of you out here tonight, do just that. You work to solve our community's problems. You, make, you create community and make Keene a, war, a more welcoming place to be. I'm sure, just like me, your volunteer efforts will pave the way to advocacy. Maya Angelou said, the ache for home lives in all of us. The place, the safe place where we can come as we are and not be questioned. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it make us even fiercer in our pride if everyone in Keene had a place to call home? Thank you.